Hi there everyone. Today I'd like to show you how to do a crackle effect and this is using two different colors of acrylic paint with a crackle medium. Now there's a lot of misunderstanding about how to do these crackles and I'm going to do a couple of videos just to show you the difference between them. But this particular one that I'm doing today you can see is a crackle where the top coat is white but the base underneath is black so that the underneath color shows through the cracks. So this is a crackle which takes paint on top of paint. Here's another example where I had a gold underneath and now I've actually painted white on top. The gold is showing through as the little veins. Very misunderstood these crackles but this particular kind where we're cracking paint on top of paint can be done a couple of different ways and today I'm going to be showing you how to do this using a crackle medium. Just to give you some idea though visually of what it is, is it's often a good idea to have two quite contrasting colors. So for argument's sake I could paint my board this red color, then apply my crackle glaze medium which is fairly translucent and then paint my top coat or contrasting color of paint on top of the crackle glaze once it's dry and once it starts to crack you'll see the little veins that are the red showing through that. Excuse the scribbles but I was trying to illustrate it to you. So I have prepared here um, a black coaster and I'd just like to show you at this stage how to put on the, what we call crazy cracks, but it could be called crackle glaze or something to that effect in your country. You just need to make sure that it's a paint um, crackle medium and not an anti-crackle medium. They're two different kinds. The anti-crackle is quite different. Okay, so you're going to need to learn a little bit about the product. So often if you do have a couple of scraps of wood or card to play on, then it's a good idea just to test that to see how um, much of the actual crackle medium you need to apply to get the kind of effects that you are looking for. If you put a lot of crackle on, I mean really a lot thicker than what I'm doing here at the moment, you will find that you get really big big cracks and if you put it on very very thinly you will get very fine cracks. But there is a sort of a fine line between having too much on and having horrendously large cracks um, and having too little on where you don't get any cracks at all. So what I would suggest for your first time is that you actually just simply do yourself a test board. It could be an old um, placemat perhaps or just simply a nice thick piece of card and then just try it out. So for this particular one I've done it reasonably thick so that you can see what I'm doing otherwise it's a little bit difficult to show it up. Test it by making sure that you get this right into the corners. I find the best thing to do is if you just start tilting it to the light you can actually see where it looks a little bit dry because it's going to show up to be slightly matte. And then when you're confident that you've actually covered it all the way to the ends set it aside and leave it to dry at room temperature. Don't use your hair dryers, it's tempting because you want to get finished but I would suggest that you do it in the evening before you go to bed and then just leave it overnight. You'll get much better results by doing it like this um, and you can see already that as I've been talking this is starting to self-level, the brush strokes are moving out of the way. So I'm going to set that aside now and then just leave that to dry. I have already prepared um, a coaster and on this one although you can't see it I have actually painted the crackle medium and what I'm going to do now is just to take some white acrylic paint and paint it over the dry crackle medium. What you want to be careful here of is over brushing. So you don't want to go back and back and back on a particular area and try and brush it again and again and again because you're actually going to just destroy the crackle that you're making. So this will react fairly quickly and um, you want to just brush this on. I try and just get it fairly smooth um, but obviously not too smooth. Um, yeah and then we're just going to just leave this for a minute or two and just let it start to crackle. You can already see here in these little areas 
that it's starting to craze. And if I tilt this to the light and backwards and forwards, you can see where the wet areas are. They're drying pretty quickly and look, the cracks are cracking before my eyes. This is the absolute magic of this, is that you can see the cracks are starting to happen as we are leaving this to dry. If I was to overbrush this with paint now and overwork it, you're going to find that it really just destroys the crackle look because you're actually just taking these cracks that are already forming and you're going to just really mix them up and put more paint over them so that they won't crack again, um, you can see. But I'm just going to just now hold this for a few minutes so that you can see just what's actually happening right before your eyes. And as I say, it is rather magical to, to do it the first time and say, Whoa, wow, it is actually working, you know. So I'm just going to just take the paint on the sides of my coaster and um, yeah, just to do it. Now the way you would finish this off is once it's actually completely dry, if it's going to be a surface that's used a lot like a coaster, you would need to put over this a water-based varnish or an oil-based varnish or a spray varnish, some kind of sealer so that you can actually make sure that um, this paint doesn't get stained and damaged. Obviously, if it's going to be used as a coaster, it needs to be a heat resistant varnish and you do get acrylic ones, so they're pretty good. Um, but just seal it with some sort of sealer. Sometimes if I'm doing something like a box, um, then where the, the, the lids join, I find sometimes the paint gets a little bit sticky. And I do find that through all the classes that I've taught over the year, because one of the things that we use a lot is just the colorless floor polish that our grandparents used to use. So it's what we used to call the, the, the veranda or the porch or the stoop polish because we have cement floors on our stoops often in South Africa. And um, we used to just put that polish over it, which gives it a waxed kind of finish. Um, and it is easy to clean and it doesn't actually allow water to stain. Right, so you've got a very good idea now of just how easily this crackle glaze medium works. And you can see very clearly the black, which is the undercoat um, of the paint, the first coat that I put on. You can see very clearly that this is showing through nicely. If your colors are too similar when you start, so say for instance you took a light pink and a dark pink, unless the, the color difference between the two colors is extreme, like a very dark pink and a very light one, you're not going to get good results, you're not going to see it. So often what I see happening here is people painting the base coat, then they let it dry, then they put the crackle medium on, and then they paint the same color on top. It's not going to work. It needs to be a contrasting color. And so vice versa, if I put my white down first, and then I paint it black on top, the whites would be showing through the cracks and not the black. I hope this gives you a better understanding of the crackle. I will be showing you some other ways of actually doing the same technique. And I will be discussing the other crackle medium um, method using an anti-crackle, which is one that you would do over pictures. So please stay with me, subscribe to my channel, and just make sure you press the notification button and then you'll get the latest videos. Bye for now.